Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGuardGuard.com and in this video we are going to look at the intersect method of Excel VBA. Now in this video I'm going to explain what the intersect method is and why it would be used and we're going to see a couple of examples of its use. So first of all what the intersect method does is it returns a range from the intersection of a range that you specify and another range. So I've got this pretend data, this sales data on screen, and I'm going to use this in a, in a kind of real world example. But first of all, let me go into the Excel VBA environment and let's see exactly what this intersect method does and how it behaves. I'm just going to bring my developer tab on here should have had this up before really I could do the alt and f11 shortcut but I like to do things that is visual for you guys so let me jump into visual basic right now and I've got this simple little sub procedure uh, ready just to save myself a little bit of time in having to type this stuff out or I'm gonna quickly just using a different laptop so what I'm used to uh, so just want to quickly improve the font size okay here we go so basic sub procedure and let me use a message box to show you what the intersect method does so here we go intersect method open bracket and it wants the ranges you can see on screen in this yellow box it can accept many arguments many ranges up to 30 there so for the first one I'm going to provide the active cell that's what I'm going to provide comma Move me on to the second range. I'm going to use the range object here and just provide it with range A1 to A10. So I'm using the intercept method, two closing brackets there, one for the range object, one for the intercept method. Use the intercept method to check does the active cell intersect with a cell within A1 to A10. Just to remind you, I could have put a comma and another one. And giving it multiple ranges do any of these intersect I could have done that this is all going to be returned in a message box so we'll see exactly what the intercept method does now let me just minimize that for a moment let me click within that range remember it was a1 to a10 so let me click somewhere within there jump back to my code and run it and there we go it returns the value from there so it comes up and says Rebecca Austin that is what is inside that cell inside that intersection cell a5 in this case then we click OK let me show what else we can do I can now add other properties onto the end there that was me trying to type address and I'll run that again and instead of telling me Rebecca Austin it now come back and says a5 because that is the address of the cell at that intersection now let's have a look at what the active sorry the intercept method does if I'm not in that range so let me click in one of these random cells over here go back in and run that macro and I'll get this runtime error so the intercept method returns you know the range or information about that range at the intersection of a range that you specify and other ranges but if they do not intersect it returns this runtime error and what we do not see right now is it also uh, returns the value of nothing that's what it does and we can use that in some very typical examples of the intercept method so let's go and have a look at those now the most common example you're going to see the intersect method used in is with an event with a book or sheet event so let me jump into this visual basic area again and let me double click on sheet one where i have this sales data and let me open up the worksheet procedures or commonly known as events and let me go for the change event 
So what we have here, let me get rid of this one for clarity, is the worksheet change event. And this is easily the most common reason, a scenario where you're going to, you're going to come across this intercept method or you're going to need this intercept method. So maybe I want to perform an action if somebody changes a value on the worksheet, but only if it's a value within a certain range. Now, the intercept method can come in to help us check like, whether it was in that range or not. So let's look at an example of this. So first of all, I'm going to open up a if, you know, conditional construct. I'm going to have an if statement. You'll see up above that a variable of target has been used. So the cell or range of cells that were changed are known as target here. So we can manipulate that. Now, I want to use the intersect method. And I'm going to have this intersect method say, was there an intersection between the target you know, the cell that the user changed and range, uh, let's say B2 to B, um, I don't know what it is. Let me minimize that for a second. 16. So these are the sales values. That's what I want to check. 16. Okay, there's the intercept method. Is there an intersection between the target and that range? Now, remember from what I mentioned a moment ago that if the intercept method fails, it returns the value of nothing. So it kind of resets an object variable. So I'm going to put in the end here, is nothing. Try that one again. Here we go. Then, so if the intercept method of the target and that range returns nothing, then do something. Now I wanna make sure it is within that range. So at the start, I'm going to put not. Now that is something that you will regularly see if you're coming across this intercept method. Is this kind of check? If the intercept of the target and range is nothing, then do something. Just missing one closed bracket on the end there. And for the intercept method, here we go and it comes alive. Just kind of looking at that while I was talking, just trying to see what went wrong. So that is a, con you know, a common structure of the intercept method. But now I want to do something. So what do I want to do if that's the case? I want to say I want to change the, uh, the cell color. So if somebody has changed a cell's value, change the color so that people are aware of what was last affected, what was last changed, the, the last cell, maybe it could be in a realistic example. So I'm going to turn it blue, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write target, because that is the cell that was affected, or was changed, dot interior, dot color index, equals five, which I'm under the impression is a kind of blue color. So let's see this in action. Let me come back out of here for a moment. And let me change a cell value. So let me say I'll change that to, uh, to 3000 and press enter. And it's turned into this blue color. So basic example at the moment, but as soon as somebody changes a value in that cell that runs that event, the if function tests it using the intercept method of if that is not nothing, so if it was an intersection of that range, then, and it changes the color. Let me add one more example onto that. Let me just reset that color manually. In a realistic example, you'd have macros working against this. <laughs> the worksheet change event immediately comes in and affects it again. Okay, let me ignore that for a second. Don't want to get too involved with that kind of stuff. Let me add uh, something else into the mix. Let me get rid of that one. In fact, let's just comment it out so it's still on screen for you guys. And let me add another if function in. And let's say that we want to know if the range was B2 to B16. And we're using the intercept method to help us. And in addition to that, I want to know if the target uh, value is greater than or equals 
5,000. And if it is, then we're going to display a message box that's just, you know, telling the user to do something. It's prompting them to do something. So I'm just going to put uh, please mention and let me use that uh, target they put in a little offset here to refer to the the cell to its left which is the name of the salesperson just trying to keep this brief and hopefully not making any mistakes um, at the next briefing so i want to make sure remind the person that that salesperson should get a special mention as they have gone past the 5000 so i'm prompting the person to make a note of this let me jump back to the spreadsheet let's change uh, paul anderson to 5500 and then that message box appears please mention paul anderson at the next briefing let me go back to the code so it's still on screen. I'll try and make uh, sure I put that code in the description of this video as well. But that is two examples using the worksheet change event, overwhelmingly the typical example where you're going to come across this intercept method of how it could be useful. Getting it to check the range that was changed by a user and to do something about it, like to change the colour of the cell or to prompt. Uh, you know, in liaise with the user with a message box. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.